All right, everybody, welcome back to Sports and Money. I'm Benjamin Parker. Thank you for being with us. I hope you're having a tremendous day wherever you're watching this from. This is actually the first episode in a new series we're doing called Vintage. In Sports and Money Vintage, we're going to take a look back in history at a player or a coach or an organization, take a look at their financial contracts that they went through during their career, take a look at some of the things that happened on the field or on the court that maybe history has forgotten about that player or that team. Our first feature for Sports and Money Vintage is Tom Bahali from the Kansas City Chiefs. They just let him go a few weeks ago during this 2018 offseason. They decided that they could use that cap number, that cap money somewhere else. His productiveness as a player had largely gone down. Even so, Chiefs uh, fans, I know, are, are going to miss Holly because of his work ethic, because of his leadership on the field, and, and just really had a long, successful career for the Chiefs. He came out of Penn State University in 2006. He signed a five-year, $12.2 million contract. He came number 20 overall in the first round. He came out of Penn State, and, and he had a lot of promise and a lot of talent during his entire career for the Nittany Lions, but especially his last season, his senior year for Penn State, that's when he really exploded. That's when his draft stock really shot him all the way up into the first round, and he had 11 sacks that season, and that really put him on the map as a player, as an edge rusher, and the Chiefs got him to do just exactly that, continue to be a defensive end, continue to be an edge rusher. They were planning to put him on the opposite side of Jared Allen. Jared Allen was an all-world defensive end, knew how to get the quarterback. back, Teams have had a lot of trouble trying to stop Allen, and because teams were focusing on Jared Allen so much, they wanted to put Tom Bahali on the other side, and they really felt like his talent could just put a lot of opportunities out there for him, and they could really have a lot of pressure coming off of both edges with Jared Allen and with Tom Bahali. In his first season, his rookie year for the Chiefs, it worked out pretty good. He has eight sacks, he has 41 tackles, he makes the all-rookie NFL team, and it's looking like a really good pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. He really had a solid season as a rookie with those eight sacks, with those 41 tackles, and with Jared Allen running up the other side. Jared Allen's getting all the attention from the other teams, and, and it seemed like in his first rookie season, Holly was really producing at a good level. What the Chiefs hoped for in season number two was that Holly could really take a step up in production in his second season because Jared Allen was getting double and triple teamed to death. He's getting chip blocked almost every play. Teams were focusing almost exclusively on Jared Allen off the other edge. The Chiefs were really expecting and hoping that their first round draft pick, that edge rusher that they saw so much promise in out of Penn State, would really take a step up in production because he was getting so many opportunities. That is not what happened. In season number two, he has seven and a half sacks and 46 tackles. Now on paper, that looks pretty good. It looks like he has had two successful seasons. But in reality, Holly did not get much credit at all for that second season because the Chiefs were expecting a large jump in production after he spent the first year, showed some promise, getting used to the NFL. They really expected in that second season for him to take a giant step forward, maybe hit double digits in sacks because Jared Allen is getting all the attention from the teams on the other defensive end spot. And that didn't happen. So in year number three, Jared Allen leaves and Tom Bahali is taking over. But heading into that third season, there were already some negative comments being written about Tom Bahali. These are some of the, uh, just a sample of what some of those things were in July of 08. This is what they said about Holly needs to play more effective, has been disappointing so far. At the start of his third season, he's a couple of months in, questionable, not a factor without Allen. Right now, just a guy. These are some of the comments that are being put out there because Tamba Holly during those first two seasons, even though statistically it looked pretty good, he just had not taken that real jump that the Chiefs were hoping he would take. Jared Allen is gone in season number three. They move him into Jared Allen's spot at that defensive end. They're expecting him to, in his third season, really make that jump and really show that, that, they, were, that they were right when they drafted him number 20 overall. Instead, the opposite happens. Third season, all he gets is three sacks. The tackles are consistent with 43, but only three sacks. With Jared Allen gone, all the teams could focus their attention 
on Tom Mahali, and he was really struggling. He was really struggling to try to get through, try to get the sack level that the Chiefs were expecting out of him, trying to get the pressure on the quarterback that the, that the Chiefs were expecting out of him. Because of that, after his third season, you started seeing a lot more comments like this one in March of 2009. Just not getting it would cost the Chiefs very little to cut. I don't know if the Kansas City Chiefs were ever thinking about cutting him or not, but certainly people around the league were wondering if the Chiefs might not be doing that. He still has two more seasons on his rookie contract, but it seemed like he just wasn't going to get it figured out. In fact, the Kansas City Chiefs largely must have agreed with that because heading into Holly's fourth season, the Chiefs moved positions on him. They moved him to outside linebacker. And things would never again be the same for Tom Bahali. In his fourth season, he has eight and a half sacks, 46 tackles. They saw the production really go up. He's starting to get double and triple teams at this point because he is so effective. And you saw that production go up. Then in season number five, this is his contract season, his last year on his rookie deal, when the Chiefs would have to make a decision after this season whether or not to re-sign him or let him go. Here's what he does. Season number five, 14 and a half sacks. The tackles go down to 36, but he really explodes off the map with 14 and a half sacks, a career high to that point. That was a contract year. His reward for that in 2011, five years, $57.5 million contract the Chiefs give him. Based on what they've seen out of those last two seasons, he really found a home at outside linebacker. His career completely changed after that. He never looked back after that. He was never the same player. He continued to play at a really high level, and because of that, five years, $57.5 million. And that was his money contract, that second deal. That's the one where he really made the majority of his money as an NFL player, really just made almost almost 80% of his money in the NFL came off that second, second year. For the next five seasons, after he signs this deal, he makes the Pro Bowl every single season. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, he makes the Pro Bowl every single year. In 2011, 2013, he makes second team All-Pro in both of those seasons. His sack totals for the next three years are 12, 9, 11. You see a drop off in 14 and 15. In 14 and 15, I don't want to say age caught up with him because I, I think he was still young enough, but I think you started to see him lose a half a step. You started to see a couple of injuries nagging at him and he started seeing teams give him just even more attention, just really chipping him to death, chipping him to death, just trying to slow him down, trying to confuse him, trying to do anything they could to harass him at that point because they knew what he was capable of off the edge. So in 14 and 15, you did see his production drop somewhat, but he still made the Pro Bowl even in those two seasons. He made the Pro Bowl every year of this five-year, $57.5 million contract. Even though the production dropped in those last two seasons, he still basically earned every dollar off of that contract. He was that effective. He was drawing that much attention for teams. He really combined very well with Derek Johnson on the inside. Derek Johnson was doing a tremendous job for the Chiefs as well. The Chiefs had quite a few players at that time. No more comments like this. From then on, after that, moved to outside linebacker. No more comments like that. Tom Bahali had made it as an NFLer and he was on his way to a really long and successful career. Contract number three rolls around, 2016. Three years, $21 million. Pretty solid deal for the, for the Chiefs because they had started to see this production drop a little bit. That's why you're see, you saw a contract that matched that, an average of $7 million a season. In 2016, you really saw the production flatfall three and a half sacks, 24 tackles. He's injured a lot. In 2017, he doesn't play almost at, at all because of injury. So the, the last two years of his career really did not go the way he went. He would not see year three of this contract. He didn't even get maybe half the money off of this contract from the Kansas City Chiefs because they did cut him and let him go. He made, I think, I want to say about 14, 15 million dollars, a little more than half of that. But all in all, a very successful career for Tom Bahali. He makes a lot of money in the NFL. A lot of that is due to the fact that he was moved over to outside linebacker after his first three seasons. That's it for this edition of Sports and Money Vintage. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm in Park. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye.